Hello there, my fellow progressive thinkers, and welcome to a new episode concerning General Space Marine's lore. Once again, a rather old series of mine, which, via today's topic, has been brought back to life. So, as far as today's topic is concerned, I've actually gotten requests for it all the way back to my first couple of months doing lore videos. And they are the mighty Super Space Marines, Games Workshop's somewhat awkward attempt to progress the storyline, aka the Primaris Marines. Today, we are going to find out mostly where they popped out of, and some of their history following their recent introduction. I am your host, the Primaris narrator for today, and without further ado, let us learn a couple of things about them, shall we? The Primaris Space Marines are a new breed of transhuman warriors, developed across the span of 10,000 years by Archmagos Dominus Belisarius Cole on Mars, on the orders of Primarch Robut Gilliman in the days immediately after the second founding in the early 31st millennium. Call used the genetic template of the original Space Marines created by the Emperor for the Great Crusade as the starting point for the development of these new Astartes. Primaris Space Marines are bigger, more resilient, physically more powerful, and possess faster reaction times than their original Astartes counterparts. Primaris Astartes are also implanted with 22 rather than the 19 gene seed organs, and their gene seed is more resistant to mutation than that of their predecessors. For 10 millennia, Archmagos Dominus Belisarius Cole had been working on a task set for him by the Primarch Robut Gilliman, before he was mortally wounded by the demon Primarch Fulgrim in the days after the Horus Heresy. Primaris Marines were diligently developed and perfected by the priesthood of Mars during the long intervening millennia. As an optimist, but never a fool, Gilliman learned from the mistakes of the Horus Heresy, and he foresaw that the forces of Chaos would never relent in their aim to bring down the Imperium. He anticipated that devastating times would once again engulf the galaxy, and knew that warriors resilient enough to stand against them would be needed as never before. That time has surely come. Now, the Imperium of Man is poised on the brink of annihilation at the hands of Chaos, and his task is at last complete. The Primary Space Marine is a new generation of hero for this era, the darkest age in the Imperium's history. They are the next step in the evolution of the Emperor's Angels of Death, genetically altered from their brethren to be bigger, stronger, and faster, timely reinforcements for the Imperium's armies as their enemies close in for the kill, in the wake of Abaddon the Despoiler's 13th Black Crusade and the birth of the Great Rift dividing the Imperium in two. To aid them in battle, these gene-forged warriors are equipped with new arms and armor forged on Mars itself, such as the Mark X Tacticus Pattern Power Armor worn by the primary Space Marine intercessors which combines the most effective elements of Ancestral Horus Heresy Pattern Battleplate with more recent developments in Power Armor technology. The Mark II Call Pattern Bolt Rifle, the archetypal firearm of the Adeptus Astartes, now re-engineered, recrafted, and perfected. The Mark III Belisarius Pattern Plasma Incinerator, a new refined plasma gun. Redemptor Dreadnoughts, Overlord Gunships, Repulsor Grav Tanks, and more. At the dawn of the Indomitus Crusade to retake the Imperium from the advancing armies of Chaos and Xenos, Lord Commander of the Imperium, Robut Gilliman, gathered a new armada, along with elements of the Adeptus Custodes, a small contingent of the Silent Sisterhood, and a vast war host of Primaris Space Marines, as he fought to liberate the scattered bastions of the Imperium. Some Gilliman had forged into new Space Marine chapters, whole brotherhoods composed only of these new transhuman warriors. 
others he offered to the existing Space Marine chapters. Many chapter masters welcomed their Primaris brethren into their ranks, accepting new reinforcements gladly. Others, though, viewed these new creations with suspicion or outright hostility, claiming that the Emperor's work should never have been meddled with by mere mortals. Fortunately, the Emissaries Imperatus, a shield host of the Adeptus Custodes, stepped forward to intercede, stating that the gift that was the Primaris Marines was the will of the Emperor. As heralds of the Golden Throne, they accompanied Gilliman's Crusade, many of them taking to the air as Virtus Praetors, the quicker to deliver messages of reinforcement to the embattled Space Marines. The presence of the Adeptus Custodes also ensured that even the most traditional chapters accepted the Primaris warriors into their ranks. The newly reinstated Lord Commander of the Imperium decreed that those chapters most devastated by the ongoing wars should be among the first to receive reinforcements from this new breed of transhuman warrior. Starting with the Ultramarines, but also deploying these new Space Marines to every other chapter in need, Gilliman aimed to reinforce the Imperium's scattered defenders across the galaxy. It was not just as reinforcements to existing chapters, though. Gilliman also ordered the creation of a host of new chapters, the so-called Ultima Founding, composed entirely of Primaris Space Marines. These chapters still trace their genetic lineage back to the gene seed of the first founding, and scions of all nine loyalist legions emerged from the vaults of the Red Planet. They benefit from three additional gene seed organs and larger size, but it still remains to be seen if Cole has been able to successfully stabilize any of the known genetic deviations or impart any additional resistance to the effects of chaos. Many of these brand new chapters have been assigned homeworlds on the edge of the Great Rift, the Imperium's new frontline in the war against chaos. Though some have inherited the empty fortress monasteries of chapters which had been lost entirely. Many of these worlds face a continuous battle against demons of the warp, as well as an unpredictable mix of Xeno's raiders, pirates, and invaders. During the Indomitus Crusade, Cole's own fleet joined the Primarch, headed by his freighter Hulk, the Tsar Quesitor, a Mechark class ship which carried in its massive hull a vast number of primary space marines still in stasis hibernation. As the Indomitus Crusade penetrated deeper into the galaxy during the early 42nd millennium of the original Imperial calendar, Archmago's Skull kept his automaton workers on overdrive, risking meltdowns with their accelerated speed. Locked inside the labyrinthine holds of the Tsar Quesitor, thousands of Primaris Marines were awakened out of stasis and made ready to join the fray. On battle-scarred Rin's world, the arrival of the Indomitus Crusade broke the demonic legions of the demon prince Raxor. After the fighting was done, the Crimson Fists marveled at the return of Robot Gilliman, but were even more grateful for the arrival of Primaris Space Marines bearing their own heraldry. Here were some warriors whose genetic composition was closer to their own Primarch, Rogel Dorn, than had ever before existed. For his raw material, Cole had selected warriors of Terra, and had taken them only after a few generations after the original Imperial Fists had been created by the Emperor. Indeed, some of them had been held in stasis since the days of the Great Crusade. A few of the Primaris Space Marines could even recall having seen the Imperial Fist's Primarch himself. Despite cleaving a wide path through the darkness that beset the Imperium, the Indomitus Crusade began to break down. When the vast holds of the Tsar Quesitor were at last emptied, Archmago's Skull departed, for he had many more secret vaults to activate in order to complete the Ultima Founding. Once deployed, the new Primaris chapters, like the Rift Stalkers and the Umbral Knights, remained after the initial conflict was won, seeking to consolidate the Crusade's gain. 
In many cases, they did so by establishing their own new chapter planets. In this way, the Crusade not only freed worlds from the tyranny of the Dark Gods, but also strengthened their defenses against new attacks that were sure to come. Though they are a step removed from their brothers, the Primaris Marines still bear the gene seed of their Primarchs. And some dissenting voices worry about how this new type of warrior will react with the known genetic quirks and flaws of some of the more unusual chapters, such as the Blood Angels or the Space Wolves. The primary Space Marines offer new hope to a besieged Imperium, but the future remains a dark and uncertain place. For the last part of the video, I would like to give a short overview of the new Space Marine formations and units that were brought into being alongside the Primaris Marines. These new specializations include the following. The Intercessors, the Inceptors, the Hellblasters, the Reavers, and the Aggressors. The Intercessor is the standard multi-role heavy infantry of the primary Space Marines, and is very similar in combat function to a tactical squad of Adeptus Astartes or a Legion tactical squad of ancient days. The Inceptor is the standard jump pack equipped heavy assault unit of the Primaris Marines, who wear the Mark X Gravis pattern of Mark X power armor, and are similar in function to an assault squad of standard Astartes. The Hellblasters are primary space marines who are intended to serve in the role of heavy fire support and are armed with the Mark III Belisarius pattern plasma incinerators. They serve a similar role to the ancient Legion tactical support squads and present-day devastator squads of the standard Astartes. The Reavers are a brand new type of Astartes combat specialist, unique to formations of primary space marines, who are tasked with close combat stealth operations. Their Mark X Tacticus power armor has been modified to display a skull-faced helm, to possess enlarged left-side pauldrons and to run completely silently. They are armed primarily to engage in close combat, and all make use of combat knives, power swords, heavy bolt pistols, and handheld deadly versions of the bolt rifle. Reavers can also stun the enemy with shock grenades, or deploy behind enemy lines via grapnel launcher or grab shoots. The Aggressors are another new type of Astartes heavy combat support specialists, unique to formations of primary space marines. They are tasked with heavy long-range fire support and have been outfitted with modified suits of Mark X Gravis power armor refitted to carry shoulder-mounted missile launchers that can be automatically reloaded from internal stores within their battle plate. They also wield flame gauntlets that unleash blazing streams of Prometheum upon any foes who dare get too close. And that, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Primaris Marines for today. I'm also far from finished with them, as I also intend to talk about their gene seed, new organs, and the Mark X power armor in a future episode. Now, what is your opinion on the Primaris Marines? Were they a good idea for a 40k story progression? What alternatives do you think could have been done better? Let us know and discuss in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor Protects.